from it, people. Today I'm going to be reacting to World War One by oversimplified. As many of you know, I am currently a nursing student. I'll be a registered nurse in under a year or so. And throughout college, I've been studying the sciences, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, chemistry, all that stuff, child development. Obviously, I've had to do a few electives like sociology and humanities and stuff. And I mention all that just so y'all can kind of see my perspective, because a lot of you were surprised in yesterday's reaction to British Christmas adverts that I didn't know that British people and the Germans played a soccer game during World War One, or that America didn't come to the war until 1917. I maybe spent a year learning about history and world history in high school back in like 2014, 2015, but since then I've just been focused on the sciences because that is my profession. So up until now there really hasn't been a reason for me to like think about history or study it or anything like that. I'm just doing it now because I think culture, history, all these things are important for people to grow. Travel, it's important for you to be a well-rounded individual. So enough talking though, let's get right into World War One oversimplified. I just wanted to explain to you guys that no, it's not the American education system is bad. No, I'm not just an ignorant American. There are different things that I focus on and need to learn about compared to you. Of course, it's important to you that Britain and German played soccer because that's your history. But why as I, as an American, why would I know that detail? But I still do it because I know y'all are interested. I'm interested, so let's react. Like the video, subscribe to me here. Check out the content on the channel, my other channels, DM me video requests over on Instagram, and here we go into World War I oversimplified. Sometimes I feel like I need to smack y'all on the hand. <laughs> Man. The world of 1914. A time Jesus, of so old. technology, culture, and fashion. Truly the height of civilization. He's on an ostrich. Let's have a war. Everyone knew a big war was coming. France wanted some stuff back that Germany had taken from it. Mm. Germany wanted to take more of everyone's stuff. And they were building a big sexy navy that was making the British uncomfortable. Okay, so going back to the 1900s, what do I know about this time period? As far as world war, the world wars go, my understanding was that Britain was trying to purify the, or not Britain, Germany was trying to purify their race, which meant no old people, no gypsies, no uh, immigrants, no Jews, no, they just persecuted everybody who wasn't white or Aryan. And where America and Britain and the allied forces come into play is we basically came to stop that. But the time we came, Germany had already done so many different inhumane things, especially to the Jews. Uh, as for the British Navy, yeah, y'all were popping back then. Y'all had like the best Navy in the world. Y'all owned the ocean, basically. And I don't, I don't know who he said was like threatening y'all in this regard, but yeah, back then y'all were popping. These two empires thought they were really cool. But Ottoman. Lots of different people who lived there didn't think it was so cool. And some of them had even been declaring independence with help from Russia. Eh. Everyone was talking about each other behind each other's backs, throwing the fact that military technology had come a long way since the last major war, and suddenly everyone was pretty eager to beat each other up. Yeah. In this area of Austria, so there's Hungary strength. lived some Serbs and Bosnians who hated living in Austria Hungary. So the Austro Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand goes there for a nice drive in an open top car with his cars republished in advance. <sighs> yeah, assassinated Ferdinand. Who was the one? I think her name was Anastasia. I don't know if they were like from Belgium or what, but her entire family was like assassinated. I thought that was crazy because how are you just gonna assassinate the entire royal family of your country? Like that's that's crazy. But Ferdinand, rest in peace, I guess. Unless he was bad, then you know whatever. Franz Ferdinand goes there for a nice drive in an open top car. Hey. waiting for Ferdinand goes there for a nice drive in an open top car with his car's route published in advance. And that went just about as well as you'd expect. <sighs> yeah, why would they show the, the route? were waiting for him along the way and threw bombs at his car. But they missed and blew up some officers behind him instead. Oh my god. So the Archduke goes into hiding, leaves Sarajevo, and the whole war never happens. Except no, the Archduke doesn't leave, but instead goes back out in the open top car to visit the injured officers in hospital. The That's takes commendable. A long turn and by sheer coincidence gets stuck beside one of the failed assassins. Who shoots him? Aye. Austria-Hungary is understandably pissed about all this, and they think the Serbian government had something to do with it, which oh. they might have. So they go to their ally Germany and say, Hey Germany, we're gonna declare war in Serbia. And Wait, without proof? I suspect the Serbs had something to do with it, so let me go request help from the Germans. That's, what? You start a whole war about a suspicion. That's wild. Germany is all for that. So Austria-Hungary send a big list of impossible demands to Serbia, and when Serbia refuses, they declare war. 
look at the size of Serbia compared. Like that's not that's a fight I would try to avoid it at all costs. And I know that he said in the beginning that uh, technologies and stuff were developing, but even still, like I imagine the manpower irrefutable. Austria, Hungary, and Germany are friends, and Serbia is protected by Russia, who's friends with France. So th but Austria, Hungary is now they're separated, right? Like it's Austria, and then there's Hungary. They're two separate countries now. Austria, Hungary, and Germany are friends. And Serbia is protected by Russia, who's friends with France, so they'll declare war on each other. Now it makes sense for Serbia to be like, okay, come at us, because look how big Russia is. And France, too. Okay, I got my money on the other, the blue people, for sure. Montenegro joins in, too. If you've been on TikTok, then you know why I pause. We're moving on, though. France and Britain also have a kind of alliance. So when France says, hey, Britain, you got my back? Britain is like, maybe. Oh, <laughs> maybe. Stay out of it, which is great for Germany because Germany has a plan. They know that Russia <sighs> is so big and clumsy that it will take them a while to get ready for war. <sighs> so with this guy in charge, Germany Hell, will send man. all its troops into France at lightning speed while Russia's getting ready, defeat France, then move all the troops to Russia and defeat Russia, and then we all speak German and eat Pfeffer Potast every day. Just one problem. France has loads of forts and defenses along its German border, and Germany can't waste any time fighting them, so Germany decides to go around them through Belgium. Ah. Uh, dang. Germany's just out here conquering everybody, dude. And wait, what is the importance of these forts if they've already been conquered, though, in France? But what the heck? How is Germany just storm blazing through the entire continent? I feel like the, the video kind of tried to blame it on Britain's um, n non- non-eagerness to join the war or pick a side or whatever, but also just Russia not being equipped to get their stuff together quickly. Like, and how did Germany know all this? Like... Belgium is neutral, but Germany wants to march 750,000 troops through it to get around France's defenses. No, you can't be neutral at that point. You're literally abiding in Germany getting through to attack. That's not neutral neutrality. That's basically guilty by association. They're hoping Belgium will just kind of sit down and shut up, but they don't. They fight back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty good too, so they slow the Germans down. Shout out to Brussels! I've been there, it's beautiful. I love the waffle. It was like $10 though, but I still, it was good. What's worse is that Britain's- Hey! And they're pretty pissed that Germany's invading neutral countries. Freaking, yeah. So Britain declares war in Germany. Yeah! So Germany push on through Belgium and commit some atrocities along the way. Burning of Louvain, August 1914. What's the Louvain? The Germans were ruthless back in the day, man. Or in Germany. So Germany push on through Belgium and commit some atrocities along the way. They also wear spikes and sometimes skulls on the uniform. Why? So if you're trying to not look like the bad... Destroy this mad brute. The German is like... Okay, they're depicting the Germans as like crazy angry gorillas who assault women. What's Kultur mean? On mm. the way. They also wear spikes and sometimes skulls on the uniform. So if you're trying to not look like the bad guys, good job. The Allies have a propaganda <laughs> extravaganza, and this- Okay, so I guess they were assaulting women, like I said, killing pedestrians, uh, like assassinating- This is really, really bad. Enlist U.S. Army. Dis oh, this is a propaganda thing made by the U.S. Destroy this mad brute. Enlist U.S. Army. So it's depict- oh, may that's the Statue of Liberty lady, maybe? And it's like, fight for free- why is her boobs out, though? Yeah, this is like a propaganda poster. We we love that marketing scheme back in the day. Y'all remember the, like, fighting, hardworking woman with a bandana and, like, flexing her muscle? That used to really work, I guess. If I saw that now, I would just be like, eh. I don't think it would work as well now. Look like the bad guys. Good job. The Allies have a propaganda extravaganza, and this starts having Man. influence around the world, notably in America. The U.S. President Woodrow Wilson sees himself as a bit of a Jesus figure. Oh, all Americans see ourselves as a Jesus figure, not gonna lie. I've even been thinking, like, what the heck are we doing this whole time Europe is destroying itself? Like, what's America doing? But at the same time, I, I see both sides. Some are like, America, shut up, leave everybody else alone, mind your business, you've done enough. But at the same time, it's kind of just like an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. So it's, I kind of feel obligated to speak up whenever bad things are happening 
or you know whatever like even with this palestine israel stuff people were like don't make an opinion favor if you're not informed and i'm just like i can see what's going on like i don't need to know every detail of the entire history of the relations to know what's happening today is wrong my little spiel on that anyways back to the video and spends most of the war trying to get everyone to just hug it out freaking also a large population of ethnic germans living in the united states <sighs> when the war first broke out they were like yay germany oh Okay, we haven't made it to the Holocaust yet, though. At this point, again, they're all just fighting because people were mad at Serbia. And Germany's like a big powerhouse. So at this point, Germany hasn't done what is so horrendous yet, I guess. But they're committing atrocities in Belgium. They're less enthusiastic. Yeah. Let's play. What happened in Belgium, though? French. Did you see him? Yeah. Easy, right? Blue. He's wearing a bright blue uniform with red blue. trousers. And do you know who else spotted him easily too? The Germans. Freaking. So That's true. Or how are you going to go into the battlefield wearing neon? Come on. You got to... See, that makes sense. Camouflage nowadays. So you can hide better. Freaking, you want to be all dolled up on the battlefield. Prissy. No. Come on. So when the French were slowly marching in columns... Their new the uniforms. Side, the Germans easily tore them to shreds with their giant guns. All the nations involved in this war went in with an old school war mentality... War is an advantage. Bayonet charges are cool. I feel like they take a long time to reload though, right? Cavalry is really effective, I guess, the more men you have. Dying for your country is all- Oh! Please. Ugh. And all of them had to update their uniforms and tactics a lot during the Sweet Great War. Russia. Because <laughs> this war was going to be like nothing anyone had ever seen before. Yeah. Russia's ready for war, and way hey. earlier than expected. Hey, Austria-Hungary, can you get on top of that? Oh yeah, sure, we've got this. Nope. So Germany <laughs> has to send some troops back to the east to defend against the Russians. Yeah, they're breaking up Germany the now. The staff of the Austro-Hungarian army is this guy, and although he is handsome, Conrad. he turns out not to be the best military strategist. Ah. Austria-Hungary constantly ignores Germany's advice, and then comes running back to Germany whenever they get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Austria-Hungary even gets its ass kicked by tiny Serbia, who repels all their invasion attempts at the start Shout of the war. Shout out to it's Serbia! Serbia Germany in the north, though, where they almost completely wipe out the Russian second army. Back on the western front... Damn! Th like, whoa, Germany! The heck? Why are they so strong? I thought Russia would destroy them. Russia is huge, but... Who was, like, the leader of the German army at this point? Germans continue the Paris. and are in sight of Paris. At this point, anyone would be forgiven for thinking the Germans were going to get that quick victory after all. But then things start to go wrong. The French commander-in-chief knew something had to be done. Quick! He ordered his armies to stop retreating. In the resulting battle, a gap opened up in the German lines. If a gap opens up, the enemy can use it to flank get in. the side and behind. So the German armies have to retreat. The Allies launch a counter- Imagine if they got Paris. The Germans into defensive positions. The Allies oh. the same. War tactics. This is actually super cool. You know, I the only war tactic I know is like the shield wall and stuff and like the things the Vikings used to do, but also just like the digging the trenches like it's just really interesting the different maneuvers of battle. Honestly, if you do, they can't obviously dig for dig for a huge amount of space, so I would just go around and surround them instead of digging in front of them like Britain's doing. Why did they just choose to like fight fire with fire like that? Why not ambush them? Were bulletproof shields and stuff not invented yet? Because I feel like they're, you could just wipe them out at that point. Get over them and start just blasting through. Then both sides move north, trying to outflank each other along the way. When they reach the sea, Ha -ha! a stalemate with trench systems running the whole way from the coast to Switzerland. Oh. The beginning of How the heck are you able to dig that far, though? Like, as someone's digging, I would just go attack them. Instead of both of us digging. Like, we spend the entire day digging coast to coast. Just obliterate them. Trench warfare on the Western Front. Trench warfare. Here's how trench warfare works. Two opposing lines of trenches with no man's land in between. Uh. One side would pummel the other with hundreds of thousands of artillery shells, <sighs> sometimes for days at a time. This had a huge psychological effect on the soldiers, leaving... Days of just battle, losing, losing limbs and stuff. Yeah, I'm not sitting there for days doing no man's land. Forget, no, you're at war at this point. All treaties and peace and understanding is gone. At that point, you just gotta 
I mean, you would lose a lot of men, but if you have enough manpower, I would just say everybody full throttle go. Because they can only blow as much as they can, like, not constantly. It's not like they had machine weapons, like, nowadays. They'd have to reload their cannons, reload their muskets, and eventually you would get your people to them and ambush them and just get them out. Mm. Many shell shock. Then, the attacking troops would leave their trenches and rush across no man's land. Yeah. A muddy wet mass of shell craters uh, and barbed wire. Muddy. Who put up the barbed wire? Probably the Germans. The defending trench would unleash machine gun fire on the attackers. Oh, they did have machines. Okay, that's not gonna work then. Ay. B. How are you just gonna walk into an open field? Brrr, literally blow you down. That's not gonna work. I don't know what to do now. Craters and barbed wire. From the air? Were, were air airplanes invented at this time? I assume they were because I'm like they were doing technological advancements and stuff, so you'd have to attack from the air. And Britain's just like water people. The US maybe could help. Where the are we at? The trench would unleash machine gun fire on the attackers, inflicting thousands of casualties. Yeah. The attackers would send wave after wave until either they gave up or the opposing trench was finally over. Run out? There yeah. would be months of fighting and the deaths of thousands in order to gain a few meters or kilometers of land. That actually kind of just makes me sad because we all have one freaking life and you're telling me you, yours ended, your entire life ended on the battlefield by a freaking bullet from the Germans and vice versa from France or Britain or whatever. Like, I think about g gang violence too. Like, we all have one life and we spend, and some people spend it just like doing nonsense. It's sad. Living in the trenches was hard work too. Corpses, mud that could swallow you whole, pools of poisonous water, oh, rats, oh. disease, the smell. It's oh. insane that millions of soldiers put up with these conditions and commanders ordered them to do so for years. Then why would people join the like army? Like I know at some point it's like you have no choice, like you have to be drafted. Thank God that doesn't exist anymore. Um, I'm sure they were maybe paid a wage, but <sighs> fight for your country, not that's not the ideology, at least for me anymore. Like over here, we, you guys know the American patriotism, nationalism is embedded in us from our childhood. So of course people like still have that way of thinking. But as for me, I'm like, and spend my life possibly risking it. I'd rather do that in a healthcare um, situation than freaking on the battlefield, you know? Mm. Oh, that's just part one. Okay, let's get 722 likes on this video and we'll do part two. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you were enjoying my, I guess this is new series of an American getting educated on history. Cause again, I had one year of history. It was world history and Texas history. And I was mainly just focused on passing the classes instead of actually retaining the information. So this is my second chance at it. Like the video, subscribe if you're here. This is a culture channel. So yeah, bye.